Now look at somebody and just tell them, and I hope you're sitting by somebody you love. And if you didn't love them when you came in, you need to start loving them now. <laughs> tell them, neighbor, don't you dare forget where the Lord brought you from. <laughs> Give the Lord another hand of praise. I've enlisted a few people to help me tonight. Evangelist Sandra Owens is going to come to us now singing another one of the old favorites. Sweet Jesus. done anything for you. I mean, you don't just come to church because you like the music. You, you don't just come to church because that's some friends you want to see. But you're here because Jesus is sweet and real in your life. Nowadays, a lot of folk don't give up much to follow Jesus. But some of the old saints, they had to walk away from cows, had to walk away from that family. Some of them had to leave their job. And Jesus said, unless you love me on that level, you're really not worthy to be my disciple. And the saints of old, they understood that. 
So that's why they have a song that says, I'm leaving all to follow Jesus. I am turning from this world away. Oh, I'm stepping out from his promise. And all I have is his today. Oh, I'm leaving all to follow Jesus. From this world away, oh, I'm stepping out upon his promise, and all I have is his today. I want to be like Jesus, want to be like Jesus. Oh, how I long to be like him while on my journey.
from the
praise him praise him Amen. Amen. God is indeed worthy to be praised. You can come through another year. Amen. Give God praise for 2023 by his grace, by his mercy. Amen, Providence. Can we all stand? This is the day we will rejoice. Amen. Happy New Year. Let us bow our heads for our morning invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, here we are this morning, God, on the first day of 2023, God, January 1st. We come to give your name praise, God. We come to give your name all the glory, God. All the honor, God, that you are due, God, because you deserve it, God. You've kept us another year, God. 365 and a half or a fourth days, God, that you've carried us, God, that you've protected us, God, that you've watched over us, oh God, and that you've brought us together, God. We say thank you, God. God, you are awesome, God. We don't take for granted that some people did not into this year. God, some people didn't even make it out of 2022, God. We are so thankful and we are so grateful for your love and your kindness, God, for your grace and your mercy, for your keeping power, for your sustaining power, God. We are so thankful this morning, God. We are gathered here together this morning, God, to receive encouragement, God to hear a word from what this year may have in store for us, God. But we know that no matter what this year has in store for us, that as long as you are with us each and every step of the way, God, that it's going to be a good year regardless, God. So, God, we thank you for being ever present in our lives, God, for being beside us each and every step on this journey, God. God, we love you today. God, we honor you today. We are so grateful today. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray this prayer and we ask these blessings. Amen. 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 The hymn of worship this morning can be found in your hymnal, Selection 463. Selection 463. Join in with us as we sing it to the glory of God. to be a Christian. 
Lord, I want to be more loving. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. Lord, Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. to be more holy, Lord, I In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be to be like Jesus. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my Welcome to our first Sunday of the new year. Amen. Welcome to those of you that are watching with us online. We thank you so much for joining us here today. And we ask now that Sister Beamer come with any announcements, followed by uh, Pastor Galt with any pastoral concerns.
Good morning, Providence. Good morning. Amen. Thank God again for bringing us through another year. Uh, we just we really just can't give God too much thanks for 365 days. Amen. Amen. Anybody have a rough 2022? I heard I see some folks shaking your head. Hey, I see Diggin Moore shaking his head. 2022 was challenging for some folks. And that 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 means that that those folks deserve to give God a little bit extra praise. <laughs> Amen. We all ought to be giving God praise and thanksgiving for bringing us safely through uh, a, a whole year uh, for all that God has done. Dangers that we didn't see, dangers that we did see, problems that we didn't know how we were going to navigate around. And now you find yourself going into another year. Any of y'all have any situations in 2022 where you were scratching your head saying, Lord, how is this going to work out? And God has brought you through it. You're on the other side of it. Amen. I know it was. I know I'm one of them. Didn't know how I was going to get through certain situations. But we thank God and praise God that he's brought us through a, to another year. And I know I know the majority of us, uh, uh, you know, in the back of our head, we, we have some resolutions. Amen. We got some resolutions, some things that we want to do better and some things that we want to focus on. But I just want to help you in your thoughts of your resolution as to what your resolution should be this year. And it's right here on your bulletin. You know what you need to do in 2023? You need to know God. You need to go with God. And then you need to grow with God. In 2023, you need to get closer. I know you know him, but you need to know him more. And I'm talking to Corey as well. You need to know him more. Every day and every year that God allows us to see is another day that he wants us to come closer and to know more about him, right? So maybe your resolution was I need to study the Bible a little bit more. Maybe I need to meditate a little bit more. Whatever it is that you are doing in 2023, I need you to know him more. You know that song, Nearer My God to Thee? Know God more. And, and then go with God. Take the name of Jesus with you. Y'all know that song, Go With God in 2023. That means let him lead you. Let him guide you. Go with him. He said he would never leave you. That's how you made it through 2022. Or forsake you. So go with God. There's a scripture that says, uh, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and God will direct your path. In 2023, let God lead you. Some of the problems we had in 2022 is because we didn't let him lead us, right? And then lastly, 2023, what do you need to do? You need to grow. Isn't that what it says? I didn't make it up. Well, I guess I did make this up, didn't I? You need to grow with God. 
You need to grow in God. Every moment of your life is a moment to grow. I hate to tell you this, but you haven't gotten there yet. You're not where you used to be, praise the Lord. But God has more in store for you. That's why he woke you up. He's got more in store for you. That's why he brought you to another year. Because he says, I got more for you. 2023, let's know him more dearly. Let's let him lead us and walk with him. And then let's grow in God. All of the other plans and resolutions, everything maybe you wanted to do better uh, uh, in your career or whatever. If you focus on these, they will permeate to these other facets of your life. If God is the center huh, in 2023, you don't have to worry about your job situation. He will provide. He will open doors. If we can get right with God, then everything else in our lives will be a little bit better. Amen. I'm thankful for another opportunity. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says on the bulletin this morning that I'm going to preach, but thank the Lord that the first lady is going to be bringing our sermon this morning. So I thank the Lord for her. Amen. Providence. We're going higher in 2023. Amen. Amen. It's time for our offering now, our ministry of sharing. If you did not have an opportunity to give as you entered the building, this is your time um, to do so. And those of you that are watching with us online, we thank you for your giving as well. Um, and we pray that as God continues to give and increase with us each day, each moment, each year, that we will continue to increase our giving as well. Amen. Please follow the direction of the ushers. Is our God sing with me? How great is our God? All of seas, how great, how great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. And our heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great it is our God. All to see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All to see how great, how great is our God. Amen. Can we all stand? For the Lord is truly great and greatly to be praised. All things come of thee. Things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own. seated. Thank you for your gifts and your sharing. It's now time for our morning meditation. And as the designated deacon or deaconess 
um, comes forward, please continue to um, lift up all those who are um, sick and shut in. Please continue to pray for the um, families and, and, and everyone in Buffalo, New York, who um, really struggled through that storm in a major way. People died in the middle of the road, in their cars. People were stranded. Um, so please continue to pray for that area as they recover. They have a huge um, recovery to come after that. Um, and just continue to pray. There were a lot of, an odd story I read, and it was more than one, a lot of um ice death accidents this year a lot of children and adults going out on ponds and lakes that they weren't sure if it was completely frozen but just to kind of play around i saw a family fell in their pool because they were sliding across their pool um but just continuing to pray that has to be devastating to just think you're going to go play a little bit and then someone succumbs to that. So just keep everyone lifted in prayer. That was, um, there were tough things that happened over the holidays. Amen. Um, loved ones lost and people struggled through. But again, we are here. So we're thankful and grateful for another day. Um, please keep um, Deaconess Lena Coleman lifted in prayer. Um, Sister Sandy Hughes, Sister Erica Hughes. Um, Sister Johnette Hughes, and I'm sure another name escapes me, but continue to keep those names and everyone else that you all know lifted in prayer as well. May we all stand, please, as we prepare for our morning meditation. To say, hey.
If you have your Bibles with you, would you please turn to the epistle of Ephesians, Ephesians, second chapter, Ephesians, the second chapter. Go past the Gospels, keep going to your right, see Romans, keep going to your right. See Corinthians, you're almost there. Ephesians, the second chapter, in the eighth verse. I'm going to look at two scriptures this morning, this being the first one. When you have it, all the able, which you rest on your feet. Ephesians, Paul, letter to Ephesus, second chapter, eighth verse. If you don't already know this verse, you should, you're going to need it in 2023. Amen. Ephesians, the second chapter, eight verse. Go ahead and underline it, highlight it. If you're on your tablet, on your phone, let's read it together. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Now let's do it one more time. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. All right, all right, stay, stay standing. Now go to your left one book. Go to your left one book. Galatians, the fifth chapter. And the first verse, Galatians, Paul's letter to Galatia. Galatians, fifth chapter, first verse. You have it? Let's read this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. You may be seated. Please play, pray for our preacher this morning, for our first lady as she comes and brings us a word here at the onset of 2023. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for reading the scripture. And thank you all for sharing in that. First and foremost, I have got to shout out my aunt Cheryl, who was probably watching. Today is her birthday. She's a January 1st baby, so happy birthday, Aunt Cheryl. And even if she isn't watching, she usually watches later. So happy birthday. Welcome to the best month of the year, January. Any January babies in here? Yes, yes, amen, amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So the scripture has been um, read for your hearing this morning, and I... I'm not just saying this, but I am not going to be before you long. Amen. 
So if you give me a couple head nods, a couple amens, you're going to have to speak through that mask a little bit. We've gotten comfortable behind that mask and not talking and singing, but we're going to have to engage a little bit. Amen. Then I will um, bid you farewell. So Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And then Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse number one, that says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. So the title for my message today is called Shake Yourself Loose because grace says so. All right. Shake yourself loose because grace says so. And you're going to have to indulge me a little bit. Many of you know I'm a music lover, so I'm always talking about music. Right, Miss Anita? I'm always referring to some song, something, and it's not always gospel. So that's all right. Amen. So being someone born and raised in Detroit and Oak Park, you know, naturally some of my favorite gospel artists in the world are from Detroit. You know that, right? Um, and specifically the Winans family and the Clark sisters. More specifically, Vicki Winans. Vicki Winans is one of my absolute favorite gospel artists of all time. Absolutely. Um, she's a strong woman. She, she sings with power. Um, and she's tall. I don't know if many of you have ever seen some of these people in person, but Vicki Winans is a tall woman. She's tall in stature, and she brings a commanding presence when she sings that will captivate an audience. Her maiden name is Vivian Bowman before she became Winans. She was actually already in a gospel royalty family before she married Marvin Winans, the Bowman family. But that union with the Winans certainly helped her solidify who she was in the gospel industry. And it helped her career take off. Well, her nephew, Tim Bowman Jr., you can look up these people later, he did a musical tribute to her not too long ago through his music ministry called Faith City Music. And that is arguably the best 17 minutes and 41 seconds that you will ever hear of Vicki Winans' music and her tribute. And as I kept listening to these songs, Corey will tell you over and over and over and over again. And I kept thinking about 2022 and all that we've come through, right? Thinking about the heaviness many of us have carried, the burdens, the struggles, the weight. I started to think about grace. I started to think about God's amazing grace. And I started to think about what we can do to lighten the load, how we can speak directly to our heavy hearts, how we can encourage ourselves, how we can recover from March 2020 to December 2022. Over two years of loss, of worry, of doubt, of frustration, of more loss, more worry, more doubt, more frustration, confusion, uncertainty, and fear. And I, as I was on the treadmill, yeah, I was on the treadmill trying to trying to shed the weight here, the physical weight. Um, I could hear so clearly in my ear the Holy Spirit speaking through Vicky Wine and saying, "Shake yourself loose, because grace says so. Grace says so." tell the people that God's grace gives them, it gives you and me permission to be free. That after two and a half years of a global pandemic, after an insurrectionist attack on the United States Capitol, incited by a sitting president at the time, after the Supreme Court took away autonomy from women, after people were looked over for another promotion, after the doctor told you you needed another surgery, after you were talked about, you were mistreated, you were cast aside, forgotten, looked over, ridiculed, counted out, God says you can shake yourself loose because grace says so. Grace gives you and I permission to give it to God. It gives us permission to let it all out to let it go, to let God fill the empty spaces again. 
It gives us permission to lay our burdens down, to turn it over to God. There's a song that says, oh, for grace to trust him more. Grace gives you and I permission to be free from the guilt of making mistakes. It gives us permission to be free from the guilt of making bad choices because we've all made bad choices. It gives us permission to be free from the guilt of turning down the wrong street at the wrong time. It gives us permission to be free from the guilt of keeping the wrong company when we know we should have cut them loose a long time ago. It gives us permission to be free from the guilt of overwhelming yourself, to be free from the guilt of being caught up trying to please people, to be free from the guilt of trying to be the superwoman or the superman that the world tells you you need to be, but God never told you you needed it to be. Grace says you should be free. For the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means freedom. It means freedom. So this morning, I want to give you four reasons wrapped up in Vicki Wine and Songs and Job's problems to tell us, to help us shake ourselves loose today of the burdens, the problems, and the stress of incomplete dreams and goals and visions unrealized. And Job is a perfect example of someone that we can use to keep ourselves encouraged and strengthened through the journey. All that Job went through, I don't know if you've ever read Job from the first chapter to the, what is it, 30 or 31st chapter, but Job went through a lot. He had to endure a lot, and all that he was enduring, he at the same time, he was trying to please God, still trust God, and serve God in those hard times. His wife and his best friends were cursing him. They were ridiculing him. They were making fun of him. And he was being tested above what, what he thought he could handle. Yet he persevered. In the first chapter of Job, Job is noted as an upstanding man. He was blameless. This is what the Bible says. He feared God. It says, in the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. It says he has seven sons and three daughters. It says he owns 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and he had a large number of servants. He is noted as the greatest man among all the people in the East at that time. And listen to this, Job was such an upright and outstanding man that he would make sacrifices to God on behalf of his children after they had partied too much. I got to read that again because I never knew that about Job. Job would go out and make sacrifices to God after his sons and daughters were out partying all night and drinking and doing whatever they chose to do just in case they sinned against God. He went and made those sacrifices. The Bible calls him an upstanding man. A man, a man who was sacrificed on behalf of people and actions that he actually did not do. Some of us won't even apologize, oh boy, to our kids' teachers. When you know your kids were in the wrong, I'm speaking from experience. You're going to have to agree, but I know and wondering why teachers are quitting every day. This man apologized to God every day on behalf of his children. He was doing everything he was supposed to do, yet the devil came in and destroyed, but with God's permission, everything that he had. And this brings us to something that's really important. You can be doing all God wants you to do. You can be the upstanding man or woman you try to be, and you will still have issues, and you still going to have problems. But the difference is you will have God to help you through your issues and your problems versus the rest of the world. 
between his possessions being burned up and stolen, between his children dying all in the house at one time, and between the devil coming back to Job to attack him physically. God said, you can bother him again, but don't kill him. That's what he said. Job still praised the Lord. Then his wife said, of, of course, I'm paraphrasing, his wife and his friends were like, you just need to go ahead and curse God and die because God has done this to you. And when his friends showed up, Job looked physically so bad that they could not even recognize him. Flesh and boils all over his skin, rotting. They just sat and cried with him for a few days. Seems like some good friends, right? But then as they were sitting there, Job began to break down a bit, declaring his death, and he started talking about all the wrong he had done, And but he refused to turn his complete anger to God. And as God began to speak directly to Job, he came back to his senses and declared that God was the God of all gods. It says in verse 10, it says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted him. They consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him a piece of silver and gold. So first of all, we can shake ourselves loose because we know that if we've been born again, that God has everything under control. Being born again means you are no longer enslaved to who you were, to what you did, or to where you came from. It means that God has forged a new path for you. You're all clear. The path has been clear, whereas before there were obstructions in your way. And some of us have so many things in our path to God, our path to peace, our path to joy, that we've tried to find alternative routes to go around it instead of working to clean it up. We've tried to go over it, under it, around it. We try to take shortcuts and a different road, but God wants to clear the path completely for us. All charges have been erased, and although the world, family, friends, and sometimes even the law won't let you forget what you did, God operates in the right now. God operates in what's going forward. And there, don't get me wrong, there is power in your past. It, your past helps to shape who you are. It helps you learn from your mistakes, right? It helps you take the good with the bad. It's why our history is so important. And I got to put another plug in for educators. It's why right now we are wondering how we can stop these people who are attempting to erase our history and rewrite it to make themselves comfortable. We can't do that because somebody said a long time ago, if we don't learn from it, we are doomed to repeat it, right? We are who we are as a society, as individuals, as a church. We are who we are. We did what we did. We said what we said. We stole what we stole. We killed who we killed. We pillaged who we pillaged or what we pillaged. But we too, like you and I in America and any other society, can repent and we can learn from who and what we were to be born again. So as we are healing and strengthening, remember, we too can be born again and we can shake ourselves loose from the stain and the guilt of what you used to be because grace says so. At some point, Job had to shake himself loose of those wicked thoughts of the mind games and blaming himself for his misfortune because God had Job right where he wanted him. And once Job came out on the other side, then he could stop and he could look back and he could rejoice because his soul looked back and wonder how he got over. But the key phrase here, y'all, is he got over. You got over, you got over it. You got over him, you got over her, whatever it is, the situation, the job, you've moved on. 
And as Mahalia Jackson and Vicki Winans sings this song that says, how I got over, I had a mighty hard time, but my soul looks back and wonder how I got over. A few months ago, I was at a church in Fort Washington, Maryland, and I reminded them of this, and I'm re reminding myself and you all that do we realize what we just came through in the last two years? I don't, I, I don't think sometimes we really realize. I just heard the other day that the official death toll was over six million people. Six million people worldwide lost their lives due to COVID-19 complications. And sometimes we can forget and we can get too casual about the fact that God spared our lives because some people had COVID and they're still here. And even if you didn't have it, there shouldn't be a time anymore where our soul look back and wonder, you can look back. But the wondering now, we know it was God. It was God's grace, it was God's mercy, it was God's amazing grace. It was the gift that God gives to us that we didn't earn, nor do we deserve. God's amazing grace is how you got over. And it doesn't mean, listen here, it does not mean that anyone who passed away or contracted COVID didn't have God's hand on them either. Sometimes we get caught up in what it means when somebody succumbs to an illness and how it relates to their salvation and their problems and their issues. And we don't need to be worried about that. We need to just be thankful and grateful that we're able to look back and thank God. There are people who survive things and there are people who succumb to things. And that doesn't mean that God's grace was any less upon them than it is on you or I. Some people came through loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, loss of income. Some people lost their homes and their entire livelihood. Some people lost connections with people. Some people lost it all, including their minds. Job certainly did. And the, the, the PTSD, the post-traumatic stress syndrome of these past three years, they are saying we have yet to see what that's gonna look like for you and I. Churches were closed, heads were spinning, stores were shut down, yet here you and I are years later looking back on how we got over, on how we got over. And even in all that time, if all you did was stay at home and watch TV, that's okay too, right? That's all right if you stay at home and watch TV. You didn't have to start a business. You didn't have to do all these extravagant things because we were just trying to survive at that point but you are here in your, re in your right mind with a reasonable portion of health and strength, which means God still has work for you to do, for me to do, and for us to do. Whether you're woman, man, church, ministry, prophet, parent, child, leader, teachers, if God has you here, there is work for you to do. Another thing we looked at and learned some of the time where we were locked down, and this applies to Job and his situation too, that in the midst of losing everything and everyone, it helped us to realize that as long as we've got King Jesus, that we don't need nobody else. I know that's maybe the only Vicky Wine and song some people know. But I do want us to think about something for a minute. Now, God did make us relational beings. Listen to this. Rick Warren talks about this in the Purpose Driven Life book. We read that book here as a church. We were created for God's purpose and in fellowship with one another. So we do need each other. But the message that Sister Vicki was trying to tell us and convey is that all of our hope and all of our trust should only be in God. We need each other to survive, but God in his perfection is the only one we can truly count on when the chips are down because humans make mistakes. Everybody in here makes mistakes. You, some, of, some of us made mistakes last night. Some of us made mistakes this morning. Some of the mistakes are just thoughts in our head. We just ain't saying it, right? Every one of us will make a mistake. Every one of us will slip up one day. I don't care how spiritual you think you are. You're going to go through the same range of emotions as anyone else. 
We will all experience loss, frustration, resentment. We will all be lied on. We'll be cheated. We'll be talked about. We'll be mistreated. We'll be buked. We'll be scorned. We'll be talked about. Sure as you're born, we'll be up and we'll be down almost to the ground. And sometimes we might be the people doing all those things to others or oh, intentionally or not. But God has been trying to show us in the past few years to depend only on him. God has been trying to show us to depend on him, to lean on him. God says, I'll remove everything and anything and anyone that may be a distraction from my relationship with you to show you that you don't need anybody else. You got to go to work. Nope, it's closed. You got to go to school. Nope, it's closed. You got to go to the store. Nope, it's closed too. Even church closed. And some churches today, I know of a few, are just opening their doors for the first time this Sunday in two years and nine months. Because the truth of the matter is, even church, lean in, as the kids will tell you, lean in, lean in. Even church can be a distraction from your relationship with God. Some people won't pray if they're not in the church. Mm -mm. Some people won't pray if they're not in prayer meetings. Some people won't study the Bible if they aren't in a session. Some people won't sing if they're not in the church or if somebody doesn't pay them to do it. For some people, church can become a duty, a place they come to work rather than worship. And we have to be careful about the two. There is work to do here. Don't get me wrong. Carolyn got to be at the door. She got to have the bulletins. We got to have announcements, but we also have to worship. And if our work gets in front of our worship, then that's where we're missing out. Sometimes between church drama anyway and politics, I'm not just talking about this church. I'm talking about church anyway. Sometimes we need to close anyway. That's not a popular opinion, but sometimes God, you and God need to spend quality time together. Spend time listening to God and let God speak to your heart. We don't always need an entourage or a gaggle of people to validate our experience with God. You can praise and worship God all by yourself. That's what Job found out. His friends couldn't help him anyway in this moment, no matter how they tried. Your relationship with God is between you and God anyway. And of course, I'm not saying the church has no purpose because the Bible does say that Jesus is coming back for his church and where two or three are gathered, I will be in the midst. But what I am saying is that God, if God is the head of your life, if all your trust is in God, then it doesn't matter, come what may, that you can weather the storm. And in between all of this, not living up to people's standards, letting ourselves down, that you can declare that as long as I've got King Jesus, I can weather the storm, I can deal with this hurt, and I can get over this mess. Lastly, as we're entering this new year, a new day, and shaking ourselves loose of the things that bind us up, we can declare that we are safe in the arms of God. Somehow in the midst of all of that loss that Job experienced, he knew in his heart that he was safe. He knew that he was safe enough to speak his heart to God and to tell God how he struggled with what was going on because he knew that God had him safe. Now, the Bible never said that the weapons wouldn't form. He just said that they wouldn't prosper thing we forget about that scripture. All oh, the weapons are going to form every single day. But that's why it's important to instill Jesus into your children, to instill Jesus into your family, because unfortunately evil exists. And the devil is just as real as God. But if your family, if your loved ones, your kids are rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus, then you and them can be safe safe from physical, emotional, and spiritual harm. And there's a hard pill we often have to swallow, and that is that sometimes we can't protect the people we love all the time. We can't even protect ourselves all the time. Those beautiful, 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 beautiful children in Uvalde, Texas, 
I believe they are safe in God's arms. We can do all we can do to protect our babies and ourselves down here on earth, but we need to protect their souls. We need to protect our souls. God declares that we can be safe in his arms. Even when lawmakers and politicians won't pass laws to protect the living, but will pass laws to protect those who have not yet arrived, God still says we are safe. God's safety is God's favor, it's God's covering, it's God's protection. And some of us need God's safety over the tragedies, the trials, and the tribulations that we are going to face. Because as sure as you're a Christian, if you love God, if you say you love God and you have his Holy Spirit, at some point you're going to face trials and tribulations. And the weapons will form, but they may not prosper. Being safe in the arms of God means that we can trust God with our life. It means that come what may from day to day, that God will be with us every step of the way, that he will protect us. The song says, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything that I need. He lets me rest in meadows grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health. Where are people who struggle with health? And he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe in the arms of God. It says when the storms of life are raging and the billows roll, he shall hide me in his protection because I am safe in his arms. I'm thankful and grateful to God that there's some stuff he hides me from. There's some conversations God doesn't want you to hear that people talking about right now. It could be good, bad, or indifferent. Maybe it's something you're not ready for. But God protects us and he keeps us in his safety. And Job ends this 30 chapter book, 31 chapter book, declaring that God is the God of all gods, that God is the Lord of all lords, and he shook himself loose of the things that were bound up, that had him bound up. So if you were feeling down and thought Satan had a hold on you, you don't have to stay there today. You don't have to stay in there any moment because just like in the Bible days, it says when those men began to pray in the jail cells, those cell walls started to shake and chains were breaking. Grace gives us permission to be free. We don't have to start this year off with the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. We don't have to start the year off being upset but we can free ourselves. We can free our minds. We can free our spirits and we can open our hearts and minds to what God wants to say, what God wants to do, and what God wants to reveal to us in 2023. Amen. Amen. Can we all stand? Amen. 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 We really don't realize how much grace is available to us. I think we really get caught up and get stuck on being so overwhelmed and upset with ourselves and underappreciated and unloved and somebody didn't speak to us, they didn't hug us and all these things. But God's grace is waiting right for us to say, just come to me. I know you didn't get it from her, you didn't get it from him, you didn't get it from them, but I have it. And you don't need to hold it and harbor those things. So this morning, if you are here with us online or if you are here with us in person and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, today is your time. Today is your moment. And furthermore, if you don't know what this grace is that we're talking about, this is your time as well. Amen. God's grace is available to all who will receive. It is not just for the churchgoers or the believers. It is for anyone who is willing. The Bible says, whosoever will, let them come. Is there one this morning today? And if there isn't one today, and for some reason you need special prayer, not that Miss Hampton's prayer was not powerful, because it always is. Thank you, Miss Hampton. 
But if you need additional prayer, maybe it's a specific situation you're trying to shake yourself loose of and you just can't let it go. It's stuck on you. Can't get it off of you. You've been in therapy, you've been talking to people, reading, praying, meditating, but you just can't break free of it. This is your time also to come to the altar and to help pray your way through it so that you can live free in the rest of 2023. And I didn't write that down. I just thought of it just right at the moment. I promise I didn't write that down. Is there one? Is there anyone? Amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you all so much for worshiping with us this Sunday. And thank you, thank you for your ear and your, your listening heart and your listening ear. God really does want us to be free. He really does. I spent a lot of time worrying about a lot of stuff. One thing I worried about for a long time is what people thought about me. And I'm so thankful and grateful to God that I'm getting over that. I'm not completely over it, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, but God wants us to be free. We spend so much time being bound up by stuff that makes no difference. People's opinions of you, what, what they think about what you did, what you wore, what you talked about, what TV show you watch, none of that matters. None of that matters. God wants us to be free. Even if you did make mistakes, even if you, uh, whatever it is, God wants us to be free. And so I thank God for that message. I thank God for his revelation. I thank God for his truth, his power, his love. And I thank God for you all. I thank God for you all. Amen. Can we all stand to be dismissed? Thank you, Sister Tammy Carter, for those items that are in the back. And I believe there are a few other items that were left over from um, Christmas Sunday. So if you want to grab those, and please do. Sister Tammy Carter, her husband, are so gracious to donate. Also, there's a few fruits and vegetables that are out and available that we received from Loud and Hunger Relief. Um, and we distributed on Friday. We did have people come, and it was great to talk to people. We look forward to doing more of that this year, amen? More of what we did through Mr. Gordon's organization. People are looking still for food, for, for hygiene items, and, and we pray that we can be a vessel um, to be used by God through that, amen? Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, all right, let us go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, today we thank you for what our eyes have seen, for what our ears have heard, and for what our hearts have felt, God. God, we don't take for granted being able to come and worship in this space, in this building, God. There are some people who don't have a building who wish they had a building, God. So we're thankful and grateful. There are some people who don't have a sound system that wish they had a sound system. So we're thankful and grateful. There are some people who wish they had people to love on them and hug on them and appreciate them and say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. So we are thankful and grateful for the people that continue to share their love and their support, God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. I pray that as we walk out of this door, God, whatever has us bound, that it falls off on the way out the door, God. This is a new year, a new season, a new day, God, and we want to be free, God. Free from the things that have bound us up this year. Free from the people, the situation situations, the uncertainty, God. We want to live in the abundant freedom that you have gifted us through your grace and through your mercy, God. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for keeping us safe in your arms, God, every step of the way, God. We pray for our children as they are soon on their way back to school, that you continue to keep them safe, God. We pray for our seniors, God. We pray for each and every member of Providence Baptist Church, that they will experience the love, the grace, the mercy that you have given and that is available to us, God. Now unto you who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before God's presence, God. To you, the only wise God, you are our Savior, you are our Redeemer. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. God bless you and Happy New Year to everyone. Amen.
asking you a song to sing for me? Yeah, come on up, kids. Yes, we are. Who? What song? Um, what's your song? Remind me. I'm a believer. You mean dominant? I'm a believer. <laughs> yes, I'm a believer. Yes. 